February 11th, 2019. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Education. If we could please start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have just come from executive session. We have adjourned from executive session. We will not be returning to executive session this evening. And we'll start with comments from the board. Dash? Uh, just hello to everyone out there. It's a packed house, but uh, <laughs> that's about it. Nothing else. Uh, all right, good evening uh, for all those tuned in at home. Uh, just a couple of things, I think. Uh, that are going on in the district that's exciting and that we'd like to see the community involved in. Um, last week we had a workshop. We discussed uh, our four main goals for our strategic plan. So um, the next step in the process, I'm going to take over your thunder, but um, is there'll be a meeting set up to set up an action plan for each one of those goals. So pay attention um, for those announcements, for those uh, community members who'd like to participate. Um, and I believe they're also posted currently on the website. They are. So if you want to see what the four goals are from a high level, uh, please visit the website. And then secondly, uh, tonight uh, we have a couple of visitors here who are working on the capital project, um, which is exciting as that continues to move closer to uh, getting started uh, once the summer rolls around. So a couple of things that I think the community should try to stay on top of and be aware of what's coming um, and pay attention to our meetings. As we also approach the budget, so uh, discussions over the next couple of weeks, couple of months. Thank you, Rob. I'm also I'm going to hold on my comments for the presentations on the capital projects, which very exciting news we have tonight on that. And uh, Carl, anything from you? Uh, just a few uh, comments, recognizing the great work of our students. Um, first, uh, Cottle, for the first time um, in recent history, has a student government. That is uh, becoming very active, and we're proud of that, and we thank the board for, for uh, supporting that in last year's budget. Um, they're, hold, they're holding their first Spirit Week uh, um, this week, so we're very excited, and there's good stuff happening there with that, with that group of students. <clears throat> also um, at Cottle, uh, and I think Ms. Newman is here to talk a little bit about uh, after the break, we have uh, a very exciting Building Bridges program, which the PTA organizes and has a, an army of volunteers that do amazing work educating our children. Uh, that is happening as well as the science fair. Right after February break, Cottle will have its annual science fair. I know the students are working very hard, and I thank all the parents that are supporting their efforts at home. Moving on to the middle school, I want to congratulate our librarian, Mrs. Johnson. She had an amazing author visit uh, today with our 7th and 8th grade students. Very engaging and uh, good stuff that happened uh, at the middle school today. Also, the Diversity Club uh, did a promotion for heart health. Uh, so this week we had our students wearing red to support um, heart health, uh, and that was a, a very positive thing. And also the middle school GO has organized the Spirit Week. The students are very enthusiastic, and it's great to see them uh, participating in this. At the high school, I want to congratulate our seniors, Miriam Kajoshi and Joy Wan uh, for their achievements in the 2019 Scholastic Arts and Writing Competition. Miriam received a silver medal and two honorable mentions for her poetry, and Joy received honorable mention for her memoir. <clears throat> Congratulations to both of you. Our seniors are getting ready for their end of the year internship uh, program uh, under the guidance of Mr. Colasuono. Uh, we have very exciting placements for them, and I wish them all well. Um, I'm meeting with our seniors uh, to get some uh, feedback from them on their experience, uh, their K-12 experience. It's been wonderful. I'll share with the board a, a summary of, of what I've learned from them uh, probably at the next uh, March meeting. Uh, but they are very excited to start their, their placements and, and learn about different careers. The feedback has been positive. Uh, also, Mackay Clark um, has been named All-Conference. Congratulations. Oh, I'm sorry, and All-League. And Malik Moore uh, has been named All-Section, All-Conference, and All-League. Two fantastic uh, young men and, and, and athletes, and uh, we wish them well. The basketball team certainly is, is, is doing really well this season, and we're proud of them. 
Um, also, uh, thanks to the uh, high school GO uh, and the National Honor Society, they are sponsoring a, a coat drive, or, or they finished sponsoring a coat drive. It was very successful, and they are donating those uh, coats to, to uh, families in need, and, and we respect the work that they're doing there. That's all for now. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Lee? Um, I'll wait. I'm speaking later. And I can okay, also. Okay, better. very good. Uh, PTA, Catherine's here. Mm. Good evening, everyone. This is Catherine Newman, Vice President of the PTA. I just wanted to report on a few of our activities. This week is Random Acts of Kindness Week at Coddle. We have something planned for every day. Our Community Service Committee is heading that up. And as Mr. Obano mentioned, we have Building Bridges for the fifth year is back. It begins on 12-25. Um, to the community members, we are in need of classroom volunteers. The sign-up link is on School B. And we do ask that our volunteers participate in a training session this week on the 13th. We have a morning and an evening session. So it's great if people can sign up now to be available for training. What you're signing up for is just to go into a classroom for an hour and to lead with another parent a discussion about various um, disabilities. And it's all grade leveled and appropriate. We're also gearing up with our Parents' as Reading Partners uh, Committee for Lunchtime Books and Bites, which will begin on March 4th at Caudill. And again, we're looking for volunteers for that program on School B. This is a, a book group discussion um, that happens at lunchtime. It's for third through fifth graders. Our Student Support Committee is planning a meeting for February 26th at 7 p.m. in the Caudill Auditorium. This will be a, like an open forum for parents of students who may require extra support to come and talk about their concerns, ideas for new programs, etc. We also would like to thank our Math and Science Committee for a successful math night at Coddle in January with the help of ma Mathnasium, as well as our Ways and Means Committee for a wonderful handbag bingo night and the support of Mickey Splains who came to our rescue uh, and provided a new location when we had to reschedule that. And that's all for the PTA. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, uh, this is now the first recognition of the audience. And unless Catherine has anything else she'd like to say, okay, <laughs> we'll move on from there. Okay, uh, we now have an update on our capital project. Uh, Russ, you want to? Sure. Okay. Russ Davidson from KG&D Architects, and we also have our project manager, Dominic Calgi from Calgi Construction, with us. So, good evening. Um, so, we had... Um, a bid opening uh, in this room and um, we're pleased to be able to tell you that we have qualified low bidders and that the Cottle project can move forward uh, within your budget allocation and it's actually slightly ahead of the schedule that we anticipated so that's uh, mostly good news um, there's only one aspect of the pre bond work that we're suggesting that you not award at this time which is the improvements to Cottle elementary school field we just believe it would be more prudent to open the bids on the middle school, high school before uh, committing those funds, which may require to use some of your uh, contingency funds. Um, the, uh, uh, we had bid at an ideal time of year, midwinter, uh, to line up for summer work. Uh, we got uh, overall very good activity. We were a little surprised when only two general contractor bids were actually submitted. Uh, the low bid is uh, within budget and it aligns with our estimates. So we have no reason to believe that that is not uh, a good bid. The uh, firm is Bertusi Contracting for general construction. Um, both Dominic and our firm met with them, uh, I believe, last uh, Tuesday uh, for uh, over, well over an hour. Uh, we believe that he has the necessary qualifications. Both our firms with, have worked with him as a general contractor and as a heating and plumbing contractor. He's probably better known as a heating and plumbing contractor than a general contractor. Uh, we also are working with him, well, we're two different school districts as a general contractor. Um, he fully understands the schedule. We had a detailed discussion about how important it is to have steel erected. He gave us a prim preliminary list of subcontractors, all people we know, we believe are of good quality. And I'd say he fully understands the job, so we find no reason to not award the general construction to Pertusi Contracting. Um, we had better turnout on plumbing and HVAC with uh, well, nine bids on HVAC, 
but that number was a little high over our estimates, and we believe that the um, the HVAC market seems to be a little bit overheated because we're seeing those numbers come in high uh, pretty much all over. Um, we like the contractor who's the low bidder on both. It's a Lombardo Plumbing and Heating, who I believe does the maintenance work here at the district. So that may be why he uh, felt comfortable with his low bids. We also met with him. He fully understands the job and the schedule. It's somewhat of an advantage to have the same contractor be the low bidder on plumbing and HVAC because then uh, all the pipes belong to him. Um, and um, so we find no reason to not award to the low bidder who's qualified there on plumbing and HVC Lombardo. Um, electrical, uh, we also had good uh, coverage and the low bid is Global Electric at a million two eight six, which is right between the estimates that uh, Dominic's firm and our firm came up with. So that's right on budget. Um, not someone we've worked with before, had a very good uh, conversation with them about the scope of the job. They seem to know it very well. They're very active in the public market. They're from Yonkers. They are not new uh, to this type of work. And it's frankly surprised that we hadn't worked with them before. Um, so in total, uh, you've got uh, four qualified bidders uh, that uh, it amounts to um, a little bit over budget. Uh, part of that reason is that we're recommending that you also, which we're not asking you to tonight, but uh, enter into a purchase order agreement with A-plus security to update the Cottle security. So this is something that was not part of the original scope but is needed and will give you a, a highly secure building at Cottle. Uh, all of that adds up to $7 million, $12,550, uh, and your budget for this work was $6,918,425. So it's about 94000 over or 1.2%, still leaving you a generous contingency of 716500 uh, Hopefully you won't need that, uh, but it would be best if you bid the high school work first, and then you can revisit the contingency in the Cottle field, uh, the uh, contractor will hold his price on that alternate, or you may want to redesign that now that you own the road, do something a little bit differently, or just rebid it straight to a playing field contractor to get a more economical price. So uh, we still think it's uh, certainly likely that you're going to get all the pre-bond scope for your budget. This is just the the most prudent way uh, that we can find for you to proceed. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Russ? I, I just a couple of uh, things that you went over. Um, one is that I did you say that you're currently working with with the contractor on two projects now, or have worked? We we've basically finished up Dobbs Ferry, where Dominic was the CM and we were the architects, and. Um, uh, Bertusi Contracting was both the heating contractor and the general contractor. Mm -hmm. And I would point out that we had to actually rebid the general contracting, and he came in on budget. Um, and then we're at Middletown uh, School District over in Orange County. Uh, he is uh, the general contractor on a pool upgrades project. And actually, Lombardo is the plumber. <laughs> so they're working together over there. And I know it's probably great if, if the the general contractor is also doing the plumbing and the heating, but because Lombardo has the experience at our school and these are very old building here, uh, you know, I'm comfortable with that. So um, I actually, I think it gives us some some confidence that they know our buildings and they know, and so hopefully they're, you know, not going to find anything, <coughs> you know. I well, I, I think that there, you know, that's part of the reason we have contingency. We are opening up a building, but most of the expense of Cottle is new construction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, we believe the drawings are thorough. We had them go through the drawings and explain the project to us uh, when we did the scope review, and everybody seemed to really, really understand it. And also, if you can just tell us a little bit, you had, you had mentioned um, earlier that the, con the general contractor was very knowledgeable about and specific about the steel work that has to be done. And as we all know, that is something that creates a constraint on time and something that's a big concern of the board and the district. Right. So we actually asked the contractor for three different letters, uh, which we got within about 24 hours of our meeting with him. One was that he understood the schedule 
and that he had spoken to his steel subcontractors about meeting the schedule, and he did send that letter, and he clearly understands that steel is critically important. He gave us the proper milestones and intervals to get through all the steps of getting the steel uh, uh, detailed, fabricated, and installed. Um, he's ready. He, he claims in his letter, he stated he'll be ready to go when school lets out, and he'll be done in four weeks, which allows another four weeks for building and closure. Uh, so he's he seems to have that correctly. He also agreed to hold his alternate price. So if everything goes well, you can award the field later. And we also got a letter from his bonding company that he has uh, per performance and payment bonds as a general contractor, not only as a heating and, and a plumbing contractor. Okay, great. And the, the last thing was that you mentioned the the bid from A plus security. That was that was a bid or was that uh, a plus security is on state contracts so it's unit prices based on the different pieces of the system and uh, what happened is because of the new security vestibule we started looking at adding electromagnetic locks to your building some of which was in the bond mm -hmm. scope uh, and then we realized what we would be attaching those devices to was uh, oh, considerably okay. substandard so that's why we okay. we brought in a plus security we've worked with them elsewhere and they helped uh, sort of redesign your whole system to be digital. So you're getting a new head end, uh, which you can actually expand to the high school as well. Okay. So would it be correct for me to say that the only addition right now is in, the, in that security? That's the only additional scope okay. in the bond that we're recommending you award at this time. And, and that's for the, like, the, the technology and the, like the hardware? The, that we would need. Yeah, you're getting servers, wiring, cameras, additional locks, uh, door detectors. It's going to be a very good system at Cottle, and um, it'll tie into the new security vestibule. Good. And I, you know, I personally, that has my blessing. I'm, I'm very comfortable with that, and um, I thank you for bringing that to us, that we, that we need that additional uh, technology to match up to what's existing because we don't want to go down the road, find out we built this vestibule and now we don't have the technology to make it uh, work properly. So um, I'm comfortable with that. Is the rest of the board You're comfortable yeah, with that? Yes. Um, okay, good. very good. Okay, anything else from anybody? Yeah, just a couple of quick ones. Um, just in regards to the bidding, it sounds like we had a pretty good turnout, certainly with the plumbing, the HVAC, and the electric. The GC, we only had a couple, um, and I highlight that just because, you know, just thinking what we had in the other skills, that that was a little lower, but I think it's important because I think this would come up, you know, on the public side, certainly in mine, um, how the comfortability we have there, that although we only had two bids, this one is lower, um, and in light of the work you guys did pre-bid, maybe you could just elaborate well, on that. Well, yeah, I mean, on uh, we would have a hard time coming to you if the bid was below estimate uh, because then it would be he missed something or they missed something uh, but this one is really pretty much on estimates and again our firm estimated and Calgy estimated it and you know you're within a few percentage of both of our estimates so we believe it's a valid bid you had one other bid it was almost a million dollars higher uh, so that would have been a budget buster from the beginning and uh, we thought you were going to get two or three more bids, but they didn't show up. And, um, you know, the, uh, at this point, it is what it is. You've got someone who's qualified, uh, who uh, matches the estimates, and we don't really have time to rebid. And a rebid could result in higher bids or fewer bids. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're a few weeks not a few months ahead of where we thought we needed to be when we laid out this plan and you decided on your vote date because we needed to hit this summer. So we're in good shape there. Uh, we don't really have time to rebid. That would really put the summer in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. for the, for the, I'm sorry, do you have any more? Yeah, just one more. Uh, so just, just so everyone we're, everyone's on the same page, this is the project that we bid out was just for the Cottle School. Currently. This is just Cottle. Uh, the middle school, high school was submitted to SED separately. You just approved an expedited third-party review for that, and we already have comments back today. So uh, that's going to be able to move pretty quickly. 
So we think within four to six weeks, we'll be out to bid with the middle school, high school. Okay. Thank you. Well, I would just, in, in addition to the two projects or so that you've worked with the general contractor, um, is there anything else that you, you've you done to kind of vet out the, the general contractor? Is, is there a less recommendation that you ask for or require? Um, well, he meets the qualifications that are in the specifications. Um, you know, the public bid uh, construction sector can always be challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, we can make no guarantees <coughs> for anybody. Uh, but we did write, uh, along with uh, Calgi, very strict uh, general requirements. He's got contract completion dates in his schedule. Uh, if he doesn't meet them, you have other recourse. Um, He's got a 100% performance and payment bond. Uh, we, hold a por we hold a portion of every payment uh, till the end. Uh, so there's retainage on his contract. And you know we believe this is a contractor who's actually motivated to build his general construction track record, because he needs to. Uh, so he's got a vested interest. He was very, very interested in getting this contract. And that's why his bid was aggressive. And that's why when we ask him for something, he followed up immediately. Okay. Okay, anything else? The other thing I just wanted to add was that, um, Rush, you did mention about the Cottle Field not being part of this bid at this time and that it was put in as an alternate bid. I do think that that gives us the opportunity to relook at the field now that we have ownership of Siwanoi or the transfer of Siwanoi. Um, we also do have a promise from the town that when we're ready to do that, they were going to repave the street for us and that in conjunction to the redesign of that area. So I, I think it could work to our advantage that we now, now with the timing, because what was bid, if I'm correct, is the existing plan, which was without the street. Right. We didn't know when that was designed that you would get the street. Right. And it might be different. And mm -hmm. we've actually put some ideas together. We'll be meeting with the district because I think that you have an exciting opportunity now that you have the street Agreed. to make it both a street and a part-time playground right. and integrate with the playing field. Great. I look forward to seeing those designs. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Oh, great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Dominic, Thanks, did you have anything you wanted to add? Or? No, we're good. That's pretty much covered. Okay, everything. very good. Thank you. Doctor. Okay, thank, thank you, you so Bob. much. Very exciting. Thank good you. news. Okay. Right. Lee, you're going to give us a presentation on the fund balance projections? Right. So every year at this time, I come and I give you an update as to where we are with the budget process as well as what our preliminary thoughts are about uh, the fund balances and our uh, budget as we go through the year at this time. Um, just to give you some background, our budget advisory committee met in January and we reviewed the budget calendar, the budget drivers, budget terminology. As well, we've been meeting ongoing with the principals and the directors to review their thoughts on 1920. Our yes, 1920, mm -hmm. to review their building staffing needs, their program needs, as well as enrollment growth or any of their thoughts on what might be additions or um, thoughts on their projects for next year. We'll also be meeting with the Budget Advisory Committee again at the end of this month and in March to provide um, more information as to where we are in the budget process and to <laughs> solicit more input from them in terms of what their thoughts are in terms of meeting our budget objectives. And just to give you some background, um, property taxes for the district makes up the bulk of the district's revenue, and it's about 82% of our revenues. And as you know, for the past several years, New York State has um, insisted or legislated that school districts operate under a tax cap. The tax cap provides a maximum amount that the district can raise our tax levies from our taxpayers, and they set, the state sets the limit at either 2% or the rate of inflation, whichever is lower. Over um, this year, inflation has averaged about 2.44%, which is higher than the 2% tax cap. So therefore, the district's tax cap will be, for um, inflation, maximized at 2%. In addition, the uh, state allows the district, um, and it provides the district, with a small multiplier growth factor for any brick and mortar growth, new additions, new buildings in the district. That rate fluctuates slightly from year to year. Last year we had a slightly higher rate. 
This year, our rate is much lower, and it is uh, 1.0133%. So what this means is we have restrictions on how much money the district can raise from taxes next year. And what we are looking at is a 2% tax cap, which would be approximately $500,000, give or take, as well as the growth factor, which is about $150,000. So we're looking at somewhere between $650,000 from our tax revenues. Then we have other revenues. Of course, we have state aid. We have um, interest income. We have rentals. We have other kinds of um, income that we look at for the district. State aid, right now we're looking at about a 2 2.5% increase uh, from what the governor's budget was. We're hoping that when the governor and the legislature uh, combine together, they may negotiate higher amounts. But right now we haven't heard yet what the legislature's state senate and assembly would like to counter the governor's uh, budget with. So right now we're just working under the... Um, ongoing assumption that we'll have about $86,000 more from state aid than we had last year. We'll hope that that might be higher as we go forward. So in order to be fiscally um, prudent and provide a balanced budget for this year, we have to carefully look at any uh, interest and growth in interest income, tuitions, sales tax, as well as we look at our expenditures to see if we can make any um, savings and hold tight to our expenses. And when we look at the difference between our revenues and our expenditures in a given year, um, that will lead to either a surplus or a deficit. We're not allowed by law to run a deficit. And uh, the surplus would flow into the district's fund balance if there is any. But we have to keep in mind that last year the district appropriated about $1.4 million of fund balance to balance the budget. So what we need to know is whether or not the district will run a surplus to cover that or if we will have to go into our fund balance. And at this point in time, with a very preliminary review of our finances, it looks as though I think that the fund balance will be able to be ma uh, maintained by the district surplus. It looks as though we have additional revenue from special education students. We budget conservatively there, and we did take in several more than we had thought in addition. Uh, students to the district, so we will have some uh, significant increases in our revenues on that end, as well as interest income has been extremely higher than we had thought a year ago. So interest rates are higher, and we've been very careful about making sure our funds are in the highest earning accounts that they can be in, and we're looking at some nice um, variances to budget on that side. On the expense side, we've had a more challenging year. We've had some emergency repairs that needed to be um, put into place. Um, we've had uh, some special education expenses that were budgeted for, but uh, our conservative estimates provided for those budgets, but didn't provide a lot of excess space after we see what our actual costs are. So I think between our excess revenues and our careful spending on the expenditure side, we should be able to maintain that um, appropriated fund balance and not need to dig into the district's resources on that. The only place we may need to go into our fund balance then would be on the tax certiorari side. So we've had so far about close to $500,000 in tax certiorari this year. And um, unless we see an addition to our surplus, we will be using uh, the tax certiorari reserve to cover those tax certiorari's. If we do have additional surplus later in the year, we can have a discussion with the board as to whether we want to replenish those, and we can take a look at what our um, projected um, outstandings might be in the coming months. We still have a few months to go even, so we don't even know if we may have some additional um, judgments that we will have to pay this year as well. We're only in, and there's actually one on tonight's agenda, mm -hmm. but we're only now through the middle of February, so there could be more of that come uh, as they, we go through the year. And if we do find additional savings or revenues through the year, we can talk about where to place those toward the end of the year. So just to recap, um, I believe that we will be on target to maintain our fund balances, except we will probably tap into the tax certiorari reserve. And going forward, as we go into the budget season, I would recommend that we think about how much we appropriate from fund balance to see if we can maintain or at least maybe perhaps do a little better so that we can start to look at a way to wean ourselves off of using appropriations and um, be able to maintain our fund balances in the future. 
Any questions? Maybe too early to leave it, but at um, this point, do you anticipate well, that will look for the entire 2% or, or is there a way to, to possibly come in below that? I know last year we didn't actually use the entire, we used the 4 million from the fund balance and we're going to balance it, but we right. didn't um, you know, use the entire cap that we, that we had. What you, what's your thoughts on this year? Too it's a little early to tell what I plan to do in March when I present to the board. Um, the, and Carl and I will be working next week on the budget. And when we come in on March 4th to present the budget to you, what we'll do is we'll show you any additions to program and what a rollover budget looks like. And then at that point in time, we can determine whether or not we need to go to the full um, tax levy maximum. It is actually because of the brick and mortar growth. It's slightly allowed to be slightly mm -hmm. over two percent. It's about two point three, I think. Mm -hmm. Just a question in regards to one of our um, reserves. We have the lunch reserve. Um, the school lunch fund. The, yes, I think that's about two hundred and eighty grand or so. Right, that's separate from our reserves right. that we can use for our budget, our regular budget. That right. can only be used. For specifically for cafeteria use. So uh, we've, we've spoken about it for at least a couple of years about potentially at some point using that to do some upgrades to the mm -hmm, cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, I know we haven't bid out, you know, in regards to the capital project, we haven't bid out what's going on at the middle school, high school, but I'm not aware of plans to either use some of those funds or is that part of the 1.3? I don't believe it is. That's part of the middle school, high school capital project. So I think, based on discussions with the students and the community, this is, and this is above our threshold, if I'm correct, based on our auditor's report. Yes. So we're actually above the threshold of what we're allowed to have in that what, reserve. What's recommended that we what's maintain? What's recommended? I'm sorry. And um, you know, what's the plan? Or, or if we don't have one, we should begin to discuss mm -hmm. one. Um, Along those lines, I should just give you a preview that I have met with Aramark, and they have provided an outside vendor who came in and looked at our cafeterias and are preparing just their thoughts on what we might do with some of those excess funds. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I get more information on that, I, and I'd also like to speak to our architects to get some input mm -hmm. from them as well, <coughs> so we could get two different types of plans, and I thought I would present that to the board later this year as we go through the budget season. Good. But we definitely do want to look at doing that in conjunction and separately from the capital project. Mm -hmm. uh, um, on that point, the, I, I wanted to say that both Dodge and Pete actually spent a, a lunch in the cafeteria a couple of weeks ago, and they actually were served lunch there and ate lunch with the students. And um, we definitely, as a board, um, are all um, very much interested in improving not only the nutrition and the food in the cafeteria, but also the, um, the, the cosmetics and the functioning of, of the space. So I think what would be interesting to know is of that money that's in that reserve, what can it be used for? Like, what is allowable? Because I'm sure we would all come up with things, and then it might not be what's allowable with that money. I always assumed that it was for equipment, specific equipment, um, you know, new refrigeration, new stoves. I'm not sure. We do use that money to replace equipment as required, but the state is pretty flexible about what it will allow. We can use it to improve the aesthetics of the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can use it to improve the serving line in the cafeteria. We can buy upgraded computer programs mm -hmm. and software if mm -hmm. we choose to. We have to stay within the framework of mm -hmm. our um, contract that we have with Aramark. That was mm -hmm. bid out. And if we want to change that drastically, we mm -hmm. would probably need to rebid. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we do have a lot of flexibility on um, any kind of building and changes that we might want to do, as long as it completely relates to the lunch program. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but not, your point is <coughs> not really the food itself. The food itself is is standardized by the state, and if we wanted to upgrade or make major changes to that, we would probably have to rebid. Right. Because we have specifications in our bid, and they've priced it based on that. And that, is that for next year as well, or just for this year? The bid is a year-to-year -year bid, but we're mm -hmm. allowed to renew it four times mm -hmm. after the first year. Mm -hmm. So it can be as many as five years, but it's up to the discretion of the district as to whether to renew or not. Mm -hmm. Because isn't there what, a committee was formed and looking at other nutrition programs, Bronxville and different school districts as to what they're doing and what they look, what it looks like and right. There's different options. We're part of the U.S. program for um, nutrition, so that we have to follow their guidelines. Mm -hmm. I, some districts are not part of that, so um, we would have to just carefully make sure we're comparing apples and mm -hmm. to apples. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Good. Thank you.
and we have to follow the, the state protocols yep. and so forth and so it's not an easy thing mm -hmm. but certainly it's an area where I think we can do better mm -hmm. uh, we have to just keep looking to see where where we can improve one of the things we were working with with our food consultant as well is to see if um, how we can incorporate more um, scratch as they call it cooking into our program mm -hmm. less processed food and so we thought we would start slowly by adding a few items and see how that was it's some issues in terms of labor then we mm -hmm. can't incorporate too much more based on the amount of labor that we have in our bid. Mm -hmm. But we thought we would try to start there and start mm -hmm. to improve the quality of some of the offerings and then hopefully move along as we see how it works out. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lee, you said uh, uh, earlier we're, our district is part of a... The USDA sort of program for um, child USDA. nutrition. USDA. I don't know if I have all the acronyms correct, okay. but it's the child yeah. nutrition program. The state runs it and it's part of the federal program. What's key about that, right, Lee, if I remember correctly from the meeting, is that, that by being part of that, we have an offset on our right. cost, which keeps the cost of the lunch very reasonable. And obviously, if, if money wasn't an object, and it always is, we could, we could um, you know, upgrade from there, but we have to make sure that we're not making the cost of lunch um, too much for some, mm -hmm. some of mm -hmm. our kids. I mean, obviously, we have mm -hmm. a, a different um, diversity in terms of, um, you know, means. So we have to make sure that we're keeping the, the cost low. Right. So but it would be interesting challenge. to know of the districts that are not part of this, what is their cost? Right. You right. know, and what are they able to serve and provide? So that would be an interesting analysis. Right. And often the districts that leave the national program don't have as large a reimbursement from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's a big analysis whether you want to give up that much money and see if we would still have enough money to provide the type of program you're talking about at okay. an affordable cost. All right. A lot to look at, but thank you for that. Sure. And thank you, Rob, for that suggestion, because that's definitely something we should look into um, while we have our architects on board and, and something that they could let us know about. Okay. Anything else for Lee on the budget? I did want to ask you, Lee, you talked about the tax cert reserve, and what do you, do you have offhand what it is currently? The tax cert reserve right now is three million three hundred forty thousand eight fifteen. It was reduced by about five hundred and forty thousand dollars this year for the judgments we've paid. Okay. It's down from about three million eight. The end of June. Okay. And in your opinion, what's the ideal balance you want? You want to see there? I think we should be around 33, 35 percent, and that's right around where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what happens throughout the By rest the end of the year. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. So we'll move on with the agenda, with the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Items two through eleven. The motion. Pete second. Rob. Discussion. While we are talking about the reserve, I just uh, the tax cert reserve. I did have a question about the uh, item number ten, mm -hmm. only because there's it, it references two different funds. One is the refund of real property tax. Yeah, the difference there is because um, one, the, the difference there, it's mm -hmm. about 52000 mm -hmm. is this year's taxes. So we have to net oh, that against this year's right. re, um, okay. revenue. Okay. The rest is previous years, and that's part of our tax cert reserve. Okay, very good. I just wasn't clear. Okay, very good. Any other questions there? No. All in favor? Let's move on to business of the board. Number one, approve a merger. Resolve that the board hereby approves the January 17, 2019 agreement, which sets forth the terms and conditions between the district and the Eastchester School District for merging the girls' varsity lacrosse team for the purpose of allowing Tuckahoe students to participate in girls' varsity lacrosse for the 2018-19 school year in the, in the interscholastic athletic program. Is there a motion? Dodge, second, Pete. Discussion? 
Well, we, th we thank uh, our athletic director for working with East Chester School District to provide that opportunity. You'll see later in the agenda, we do also have um, on our agenda to add girls modified lacrosse for this spring. So obviously there's an interest amongst <coughs> our students and it's great to be able to have a place for them to play at this point. Just one comment question on that. So I, obviously there's interest from, from our student athletes that they play lacrosse. Um, if the program is hosted by East Chester, um, the travel um, and the transportation for our students, is that, is that more the responsibility of the parents or the student to get there on their own? We're not, we don't provide transportation for the students to make it over to, to their facility? That's correct, Rob. <clears throat> All in favor? To approve service agreements, resolve to approve student service agreements A through B, and amendment to agreement C. Motion. Dodge second. P discussion. These are special education services, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all, all of these services support uh, students' IEP goals and programs, and uh, they're they're very typical. We 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 renew a lot of these uh, year after year. Yeah, <coughs> all in favor? Number three, adopt a 2019-20 school calendar. Resolve to adopt the school calendar for the 2019-2020 school year as attached to the official minutes of the meeting. Motion. Rob, second. Dodge, discussion. I'll just mention that the calendar was um, fairly straightforward. Um, some years are more challenging than others, but, but this year it worked out well. We had one decision to make, which was um, a full two weeks for, for the December recess mm -hmm. uh, versus adding some days in the spring, which we could take back in case we have a, a, a tough winter and, and have snow closings. So where we landed, although it, you know, uh, it was appealing to maybe have a two full week um, holiday recess in December, we thought it was wise uh, to have those days in the spring. Hopefully we have a, a mild winter. We don't need to use them, but just in case um, the days are there later in the year, just in case we need to put them back and make them school days. Otherwise, it works really well, uh, and, and I, I, everyone was in agreement. The teachers looked at it. Civil service looked at it. Administrators. So that's the recommendation. Okay. Speaking of a snow day, you want to make an announcement or not? Okay. No, <laughs> not going to get that tonight. Okay, Possibly. We'll have to wait. I have a question just in regards to the school calendar. I'm not, I think it belongs here, or at least the discussion anyway. I, I've, I've read a, a fair amount about this, and it's come up from some of the parents in the community about the national movement toward maybe a later start date. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that's something in our district. I believe back, we used to all start at the same time, but there were mitigating factors as to why we moved the middle school, high school up. Can you just maybe remind myself and the community as to what those factors were? Sure. Well, well, you know, the current, the current start times and end times for the school day have to fall within contractual guidelines. So within the teacher's contract, there, there are, there's an early start time and end time. There is some flexibility, but the other big consideration is transportation. And also than after school programs such as athletic programs so there's a, there's a number of considerations but you're right rob um, many districts are looking at a later start time particularly for the older students um, and i think that is something that maybe we ought to take a look at but it, it will require some time to analyze it study it um, really really vet it from all different angles thinking about our after school programs our sports programs our participation in section one uh, and, and transportation, would there be any impact to uh, transportation expenses? But I, I think it's worthwhile. But I think I'd like to assemble a committee to study it first um, and then potentially negotiate and, and, and look at changing some of those start times. But, but I think maybe next year we can, we can have a study year with the idea of potentially changing it in the 2020-21 school year. It's definitely worth looking into. I mean, there's a lot of research out there about how teenage kids you know, mm -hmm. um, the sleep cycles, the normal sleep cycles puts them at a later um, sleep cycle in the morning. There's a mm -hmm. lot of research out there about it. And I don't know if you noticed it, but I was reviewing some of the survey results that were sent. Um, and actually, one of the questions for the high schoolers was about getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. They almost, almost a large percentage of them said they don't get enough sleep. 
So it's just an interesting, it was interesting to see that on the survey. Um, but uh, no, but there's a lot of research out there about this topic, so definitely worth looking into. Okay, sure. we'll work on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, um. Oh, all in favor, right? Yes, all in favor. <laughs> School calendar. Okay. Okay, number four, award a bid. Resolve to accept the lowest responsible bid for the minor repair services for the 2018-19 school year from Mohegan Park Contracting, Inc., New Rochelle, New York. So motion. Pete, second, Rob, discussion. Little background. Lee, you want to mention the work that we intend for them to do? Yeah, this is for uh, small carpentry projects throughout the district, um, classroom repairs, things of that nature. We had a contractor that um, decided to give up this business midway through the school year, so we rebid it out again, and um, Mohegan Park was a low bidder. We've worked with them in the past. They're a good firm. They do nice work, and their rates were actually a little bit lower. So. And they're basically, I guess, they're on call. Correct. Right. So They would give us a proposal, and then we would, um, we would tell them what we'd like to do. They would give us a proposal. Because this Thank is you. something I think we we did at the reorg meeting, correct? Yeah. We usually That's do right. this. Okay, so this is a different contractor because the one that we appointed at the reorg meeting is no longer doing this type doing of this work. Course. Okay, very good. All in favor? Number five, award a bid. Resolve to accept the lowest responsible bid for painting services for the 2018-19 school year from Mohegan Park Contracting, Inc., New Rochelle, New York. Motion. Dodge, second. Rob, discussion? Also, Mohegan Park was the lower bidder uh, for this as well. We had been working with independent contractors throughout the year this year, and uh, we reached our limit with those for purchasing purposes, so we rebid re that out as well. And again, this came in lower than what we had paid previously, so okay, it good. worked out well. All in favor? Number six, award capital project bids. Whereas the Tuckahoe Union Free School District sought bids for additions and alterations to William E. Cottle School, and whereas the bids received were opened on February 1, 2019 at 3 p.m., and whereas the Board of Education has decided to award the additions and alterations to William E. Cottle School with no alternates. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tuckahoe Union Free School District hereby accepts and approves the contract award for contract award the bids from the following lowest responsible bidders. Number one, general construction contract for the additions and alterations to William E. Cottle School in the total amount of $4,688,688 to Bertucci Contracting, Inc., 6070 Dexter Plaza, Pearl River, New York, 10965, and number two, Plumbing contract for additions and alterations to William E. Cottle School in the total amount of $184,400 to Joe Lombardo Plumbing and Heating at Rockland, Inc., 321 Spook Rock Road, Suite 109A, Suffern, New York, 10901. And three, HVAC contract for additions and alterations to William E. Cottle School in the total amount of $720,900 to Joe Lombardo Plumbing and Heating at Rockland, Inc., 321 Spook Rock Road, Suite 109A, Suffern, New York, 10901. And Four, electrical contract for additions and alterations to William E. Cottle School in the total amount of $1,286,000 to Global Electrical Contracting of Westchester, Inc., 965 Nepperin, Nepperhan Avenue, Yonkers, New York, 10703. And five, security contract for additions and alterations to William E. Cottle School in the total amount of $132,562 to A-plus Technology and Security Solutions, 1490 North Clinton Avenue, Bayshore, New York, 11706, and be it further <coughs> resolved that the Board of Education hereby authorizes the Board President to execute individual contracts between Tuckahoe Union Free School District and each of the above listed contractors, and be it Further resolve that superintendent of schools and assistant superintendent for business are authorized and empowered to take all necessary or appropriate actions in order to further the purpose of this resolution and comply with the awarded contracts. Motion. Dodge. Second P. Discussion. 
Michelle, I, I think it's important for the public to know, although we had a public presentation and the board asked some great questions of our architect, um, that behind the scenes that there was a lot of drilling down on the information before we got to this recommendation. Lee and I have spent many weeks uh, working with the architects, the attorneys, and the project manager, really understanding each and every company, vetting their backgrounds, uh, the board also, and I appreciate your time, spent uh, a lot of time before this meeting in private with the attorneys, with the architects, with the project man managers. This is a major decision, but uh, we really have been very thoughtful, and, and I do think we have the right lineup of, of um, construction companies and contractors uh, to do this job properly. So I am confident in the recommendation we are making this evening. Yeah, I would um, absolutely agree with everything you just said. I just think it's very important that we assure the community that we take these decisions very seriously. We have the community's trust with the $10 million project, and we want to make sure that we are actually um, really looking into every decision we make. I want to thank Carl for making the architect and the project manager and our attorneys available to us and the board members who asked some very valuable questions and really wanted to make sure that we were making the appropriate decisions here because, as Carl just said, it's a very big decision but also a very exciting one to be moving forward at this time. Anything else? Okay. All in favor? Okay. That was great. That's good. Okay. Personnel? One, accept personnel recommendations. Oh, no, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do resolve to accept personnel action items A through G as outlined below. Is there a motion? Dodge, second. Pete, discussion. Uh, I just, you know, Carl, if we just want to say that there's a couple of new uh, opportunities for students here, I'm happy to see that there's an advisor for the the club that our uh, Pioneer. director of special education has recommended, the Pioneer League advisor, yes. and there's a um, new modified lacrosse team and uh, track, spring track, both modified, um, and I, well, is that spring track? Joseph Tolls <coughs> spring track. I, I yes. would believe that's a varsity position, right? Or JV or varsity? I believe Modified so. spring track. So that's all very exciting and additional opportunities for our students, which we're always happy to come before the board and accept. All in favor? Okay. That's all. We did all that. Okay. So that's that. Okay, second recognition of the audience. Catherine, give another <laughs> chance. No. Okay. All righty. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. Dodge, second, Rob. And that's it. Thank you. Have thank a good you, night. Safe travels tomorrow, thank everyone. You. Please watch the weather and uh, wait for an announcement from Carla Beth.